Hi folks, welcome to this video on transfer of learning, one of the theories of learning. Um, what we'll look at here is, it, it, this does exactly what you'd expect it to do. Transfer of learning is how the learnings of one skill can affect the learning of another. And it's important to start off with that definition first. Now the reason I've put that there is because you're going to see there are six different types of transfer. Um, they're not all going to help, some are going to hinder... So it's not all, all right, if I learn one skill, that's going to help that one. It's not as straightforward as that. So like I said, there are six types of transfer. Let's have a look at them one at a time. Positive transfer, fairly straightforward. Learning one skill helps the learning of a new skill. So learning to serve in tennis, or, or sorry, if you're already a good tennis player and you can serve, if you learn to do the overhand serve technique in volleyball, that is going to benefit you because there's a lot of similarity between those two skills, Okay. As you might expect, the negative transfer is where learning of one skill hinders the learning of a new one. Now, that sometimes occurs in quite surprising sports. I've got a friend who plays tennis and he refuses to play squash. So when the tennis season is over in the summer, okay, you might think you'll go and do an indoor sport like squash or badminton. He refuses to do that because he says squash and badminton is very much about, you know, more with the wrist and the elbow action, whereas tennis is more at the shoulder. And he actually picks up bad habits playing squash and badminton so when he starts his tennis season again he finds his tennis technique is worse he tries to be you know he tries to snap the ball with his wrist a bit too much uh, when he starts taking up tennis so it's where the learning of one skill hinders the learning of another skill zero transfer is where there's no effect on learning of a new skill a shot putter taking up cycling there's just going to be no transfer it's neither going to be positive nor negative Okay, sounds a bit ridiculous. You think, what is the point in learning that? Um, if you look at like Formula One drivers, um, what's the most common activity that most of Formula One drivers do outside of Formula One is triathlon. Now, it keeps them nice and healthy and light and things like that. But you might think, why don't they do something like rally cross? Why don't they, you know, where you're on the dirt tracks and the, ga and the gravel roads and things like that? It's again because they pick up too many bad habits that they then bring back to the um, F1 circuit. So at the risk of avoiding negative uh, transfer, they'll just pick a totally different sport to do to occupy the time, such as triathlon. They'll do something totally different to their sport where there's neither a chance of positive nor negative transfer taking place. Now, here are a couple of more difficult ones to get your head around. Proactive is where we are going forwards in time. So proactive transfer is where your current practice could affect the learning of a future skill. Now, not help or hinder. We don't know yet because we haven't done the future skill yet. It could just affect a future skill, okay? So, for example, you might have a cricketer who is, you know, a batsman who is thinking of taking up baseball, right? Now, we don't know for definite with this maybe potentially going to be positive transfer there. There could be negative transfer there because it's not the same technique and you might carry too much force. We don't know. All we know is the cricket technique is going to have impact on the batting technique in baseball. And that going forwards onto the new skill is known as proactive transfer. Because we've got a forward in time, we've also got a backward in time. Retroactive. The, the way I remember it is retro. If you're, if you're dressing retro clothing, things like that, you're wearing a bit old school clothing, you're going back in time. Retroactive. Let's say that cricketer has now started playing baseball. Okay, so they've gone from the cricket... And, you know, at that stage it was proactive transfer because they haven't tried baseball yet. Now they've tried baseball and they're having a go at it, but they're thinking of going back to cricket again at the end, at the end of the season. Well, that's going to be retroactive. How is the new baseball technique going to affect the old batting technique in cricket? Again, we don't know. Could help, could hinder. We're not sure. But the fact that we're going back to the old technique, that makes it retroactive transfer. Finally, then, we've got bilateral transfer, whereas if you practice on one limb, it is going to improve slightly the performance on the opposite limb, i.e. if you practice something on your right arm, your left arm will get slightly better at it. Not, you know, it's not from arm to leg or leg to arm, it's from arm to arm, from leg to leg. Um, obviously, it's not as good as actually practicing on both sides of your body. But where is there a very good practical application of this? Unfortunately, people who've suffered strokes and where, you know, one of the half of their body is shut down a little bit you can still practice and work with the good the non-stroke affected side of the body and hopefully that will have some transfer some bilateral transfer 
over to the side of the body that has been affected by the stroke. So there are the six types of transfer of learning. Just to give you a quick practical example now. I know it's a bit Hollywood, but think of the film Cool Runnings. Okay, you know, it's based on a true story. Although Disney did their magic with it. Um, you've got sprinters, okay, who didn't qualify for the Summer Olympics. So transferred over to the skill of bobsledding. So what they've done there is, as sprinters looking at bobsledding, you're looking at proactive transfer. Okay, so you've got potential for proactive as they go from sprinting to, I'll put bobsled. Okay, that's proactive. Did it work out for them? It did. You know, they became good bobsledders. So it was also positive transfer. What happened afterwards as well is some of them went from bobsled when the Winter Olympics were over back to sprinting. So again, what you've got an example of there is retroactive transfer. And here's where it gets quite interesting. Some of them reported that they found sprinting easier having done bobsled training because you weren't having to shift a heavy sled. So some of them reported it was positive. However, some of them said that the technique of running pushing a bobsled had messed up their technique so badly you know your arms don't move when you, you know you don't pump up the shoulders when um you're pushing a bobsled so some of them reported it actually had a negative transfer effect on their sprinting technique and this is the thing you know it's neither one nor the other uh indefinite cases we're all just we're just looking at the different types and how it can impact on performers okay so they are the th uh, that is the theory of transfer of learning and the six types of transfer